What's going on, guys? JR Sports Media here, back for another episode of the Smack Talk podcast. As always, I'm here with Kevin Mesnick, Jonathan Weathers, as well as Philadelphia guard Lamar Kimball, who played four years at St. Joe's, you know, a graduate year at the University of Louisville. Lamar, what's going on, my man? Not much, man. You know, trying to stick through with these tough times or whatever this is, this little pandemic. How you been staying active, brother? I know, you know, a lot of people don't have hoops around them. A lot of people don't got gyms that are open. What have you been doing to stay, you know, keep your body up in tune for the season? Yeah, um, I, I mean, I wake up every morning and I just go jogging every morning, try to uh, keep my miles going up from there, just making sure I'm um, staying in shape, staying ready, so that once I get on the basketball court, you know, that take care of itself, but at least I'm in shape and everything. So I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of athletes, you know, either with their father or, you know, someone, you know, a mentor or a friend. Do you have anyone in your life right now that's really pushing you? Like, Lamar, we got to get work. And even though quarantine's up, you got to get that body right for, you know. I know you're a grad right. senior, you know, a transfer. You're trying to work out what's yeah. next in your career. So, you know, yeah. do you have anyone in your life that's pushing you right now? Um, I mean, definitely just my core friends, you know, my, my father, my mother, just everybody that's, you know, I consider, you know, blood family and stuff like that. But um, I have high expectations of myself, so I'm always pushing myself to, to get to a bigger height or achieve goals that probably somebody else think I can. Gotcha. Now, now with, with the corona being, like Jake said, I know you can't train as much as you probably want to. Have you been able to get to any hoops or anything like that? I know you said you've mostly been working out, but. I have got to, like, being able to shoot on the court with, you know, a trainer, but it was all, you know, under restrictions, making sure that you take the right measures before you're able to go on the court, everything you got to go through. But um, I was able to get on there. I was, you know, winded. Basketball shape is different than, than uh, you know, just running on the street type shape. So that's how I, I know it's going to be a little weird when those guys from the NBA get back and they start back. Mm-hmm. Put a little back. elbow on you. Yeah, right. You got to get used to all that again. So that, that stuff is different. So that that's going to be the adjustment for everybody kind of coming back. Gotcha. Nice. You quarantine at, you quarantine at home right now? You hooping at your hometown court or something? Or Yeah, I'm quarantined at home. Um, this little parks around here that are kind of open. I kind of go out there when nobody's there, stuff like that. And um, just keep it like that. Keep it simple. Stay, stay healthy. Stay out the way, for real, for real. Gotcha. Yeah. So that kind of leads into my next question. I mean, are you visiting back basketball courts uh, where your career started? I mean, uh, how young were you when it started? Are you are you playing basketball at the same places now that you're home? Or? Right. Um, I'm a little. I mean, well, where I grew up from, I'm from Philadelphia and the inner streets. You know, kind of staying away from that part. I don't like kind of going back home and being out there too much because I know all those guys and they're kind of in the same spot. You know, some a place that I don't want to be at. So I kind of stick to being where I went to St. Joe's for four years, so I'm able to get in there. You know, so I'm still alumni there, so able to use their course when I can. But um, yeah, other than that, though, I still go home always, and you know, pay respect to me being home, and you know, my mom's still a little around there and things like that. So you know, all that that's still love to me, but I try to stay away from the basketball side of things at home. Now I heard you just say you kind of you got to pay respect, pay a little homage to, to the hometown. Now, with that being said, you got some basketball greats from, from Philly, you know, that even played in Philly, from AI to the late great, my guy, Kobe Bryant. Right. Lil' Marion. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it's the, the so, basketball so. tradition in Philly is just, it's a continuing thing. I mean, the younger players under me, that they're going to make the game expand. Um, the players before me, you know, they paved the way for me to even love basketball. So, I mean, just being in the city, it's a, it's a whole, it's a fuel fire. You got to have a lot of, determination, a lot of confidence in yourself. And, you know, you're going to have your doubters and you're going to have your people that support. And that's kind of anywhere. But in a real basketball city like Philadelphia, you know, they don't hold your tongue. So you got to bring it. <laughs> would you say that Would you say that Philadelphia's got a got a certain play style? Um, i say a certain play style a little bit. I mean, everybody has their different games. But i say of course, of course. The, the one thing you got to have is heart coming from Philly. I mean, that's the biggest thing, like. It don't matter who you is. You somebody could be ranked number one in Philly. Somebody going to check. They're going to test your heart. They're going to see if you you got it to bring it every day. And that that's something you, that you just you kind of grow up and be born with. So it's yeah, some heart. So Lamar, gritty. it's a gritty place. Gritty, I hate definitely you. gritty. Lamar, adding off that number one topic, uh, you know, researching your career for this interview. You know, I noticed that you played with some special players in your career. You know, you play freshman year. You're at St. Joe's. You play with DeAndre Bembry, obviously. Yeah. Very high overall pick from the Hawks. And then you go to Louisville, you play with Jordan Nawara, you know, the top junior in his class this year. What is it right. like to play with those kind of guys? Because, you know, 
when I was researching you, I was wondering if you played at St. Joe's during the glory days because, you know, I follow St. Joe's basketball just as much as I follow any other team. You know, I'm a mm -hmm. college basketball fan, and I remember the glory days of St. Joe's when DeAndre Beverly, you know, couldn't be stopped. So what is it like playing right. with this kind of dynamic uh, group of players? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. Um, just to start off, you know, somebody like DeAndre and somebody like Jordan, they're both two completely different type of players, two completely different type of play styles. And to just be able to learn different stuff that they do out there and in a different way that they think and score and the way they play. I mean, I just say I was kind of blessed to be able to kind of, you know, lace it up with them guys and kind of help them get to where they at and vice versa and stuff like that. Um, you know, just me being a freshman, though, especially with DeAndre coming in my freshman year, I felt like that was, you know, my most learning curve because he just taught me how to go about being a pro every day. You watch somebody, yeah. you play the whole year with them, you're there through the summertime, you're there through practices, through the A-10 tournament, and then now you see where you're at now. You're just like, like wow. Like, I mean, like, you know, it's possible for anybody, especially coming from the same place you came from. Definitely. Definitely. Well, usually, uh, you know, a college like St. Joe's, you know, you have eyes on you. I'm not going to say you don't, but when you got, you know, DeAndre Bembry there, it must feel good for a person like you, you know, you're a freshman, a guard, trying to get spotlight, maybe get you know, the presence of any type of, you know, recognition for your game, and you're playing mm -hmm. alongside a, you know, a player that's worldwide known. So, right. Just yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, that type of stuff. When you play against players that's good like that, they make you better on the court. They make stuff that you do, you know, stand out on the court like that. Um, I mean, I got some assists from Jordan, but he made some tough shots this year. But it just even be, you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, just playing with those guys, they help you on and off the court. But, you know, you end up you end up upping your game to their level to try to play on the same level, you know, to, to say that you're there with your teammates and your brothers on the same level playing with them and stuff. So, you know, um, you know, that was, those are big for me in my career, I would say, being able to play with some, some high-level guys who I knew that were going to be pros. 100%. So gotcha. kind of kind of going off of that. I mean, uh, playing at St. Joe's, they made uh, they made March Madness back in uh, 2014, 2015, right? And uh, that was kind of one of the first times the school ever made it. And then you know you moved on to Louisville. It's kind of you know uh, someone who's constantly in the March Madness tournament. So right. was there any difference in playing? I mean, when you changed schools and you got to Louisville, I mean, changing you know divisions and everything else. Uh, maybe you want to talk about that. Yeah, um, total difference. Um, St. Joe's every game, we're, we're playing to, to give ourselves a name, to, to show other teams that we belong out here, that we can belong with the top teams and things like that. We can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, match up with whoever. That's what you kind of do as a mid-major. Yeah. Everybody mid-major, they're kind of – their idea is to show everybody that, you know, I can do more than what you think, and we can play up to the level of, you know, the high-level the high level schools or blue bloods and things like that. And when I got the logo, it's different. It's like – the target's on your back now. You're not out there trying to, you know, say, let me beat the number one team in our conference or we got to win our conference tournament to win, to go to the AC, uh, a, um, NCAA tournament. You just know from the jump that every game we play, this game is like somebody's championship game. I mean, yep. like, and it don't even matter. And the, the city expects that too, for you to play every game like it's, like it's a championship game. So, I mean, just having that different feel between, uh, between becoming an underdog to becoming somebody who was really like looked at, target on your back, I think that was different in college, like a very huge part for me. Right. Would you say that, <clears throat> excuse me, would you say that you had to change the game up at all when you, changed, when you went from school to school? Um, I mean, a little bit here and there. When I got to Louisville, it was more about a team thing. You know, I went there to win, and that was our, our goal for us to be winning our game. And we had so many scorers on our team and guys who could put the ball in the basket. It was more about, you know, me taking a role of being the number one stopper on the team, guarding whoever was the best player on the other team and slowing them down from what they usually do at Katana now. And running the show out there, being trying to be low on turnovers and set those guys up who score in different situations. So it was a difference. Whereas though, you know, St. Joe's, I it was, you know, I had the ball. It was you got to score this amount of points for us to have a shot against some certain teams, or I got to play at a certain expectation every game for us to have a good chance to win. So I mean, um, it, it's a difference when you coming in from being a main player to you know having to fit in the system. But I mean, those are the type of things you do. You sacrifice to win. I felt of course. Like you, that was my main thing to sacrifice the one. I feel like everybody does that if you're really a winner. If you're a win that exactly. If you're really a winner, that is, you're winning for sacrifice. Right, right. Well, Lamar, speaking of winning, obviously, you know, you won the state championship as a senior in high school. Being a Philly guy, you go to St. Joe's, 
you know, it seems like you have that winning mentality and, you know, that, that mentorship going forward. What was it yeah. like to play, you know, in Philly? You win the state championship. You, you graduate high school and you're going to St. Joe's. What is, it, what is it like when you win the state championship with your brothers? I mean, that's a great feeling, especially senior year, state championship. That's your last game. Like your senior year, it's nothing after this. There's no that's, – that's the memory I have last. It's like you can't tell me nothing – other than, you know, I had a pretty, I would say, good, successful uh, high school career, you know, at Newman Garrett, you won a lot. But you can't tell me nothing if I can cap my career off on a state championship. For the championship, that's, yeah. That's, that's all that, that matters to me. Like, it, you can't tell me nothing else. Like, I, I did it. You know what I mean? Like, our team did it. So, um, that that was just great in terms of just knowing that I'm going to St. Joe's as a Philly guy and to be able to, to secure that before I go to college level. It's like, okay, like, he's a player coming here to really make a difference at the school and not just – be another player who you know fits a role or you know comes here to just be average and stuff like that. Very interesting. Yeah. What is? Are oh, you ready for me? Uh, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was waiting for you to hit him with another one. <laughs> I was gonna say who who'd you kind of grow up kind of idolizing? Who did you base your play off anybody or? Yeah. Um. I mean, when I was young, like I'm talking when I first started, I. You know what? Now that I said that, I missed when you asked me that question, Kev. I know I first you started did. Playing, now that I yeah, now that you said that, I just remember, I first started started playing basketball when I was, first could remember about like five years old. My first league ever, I was six. My mom took me up to the park. She you know had me up there shoot on the monkey bars, and I played on a little courts in the leagues and stuff like that. So my favorite player back then was Jason Kidd. I love Jason Kidd. I wore number five in high school for that reason. Um, just the way he played his whole career, especially at the New Jersey Nets, you know, being close to Philly, he was able to see that side of the, the East Coast basketball and stuff like that with them, Kenny Martin, and all, yeah. when they had that squad. So yeah. I grew up watching, that, that, that made me the point guard I was. I'm like, listen, if I can't shoot the ball, I'm going to get to the lane and I'm going to be able to. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I grew up. But once I got older, I started to get to high school, understand the game a little bit more. I started to kind of fall in love with Chris Paul, People like that, um, people like Kyle Lowry, players like Kyrie, stuff like that. Just the point guard position who will just make you think on your toes at all times, and they're not the most athletic. Whereas you know the Russell Westbrook and Drew Holiday's dunking the ball, they're not like that. Mm -hmm. They're the, the ones who are skilled, smart, crafty, things like that. So those are the type of players I kind of really look at. Got you. Word. And growing up, uh, I mean, growing up in Philly, I mean, uh, were you surrounded by any other players that are your age right now doing the same thing as you in the same level? Yeah, you saying like competition I played against? Yeah, like you got you got any friends or competition or people you grew up with that are kind of in the same level as you right now from Philly? Yeah, um, I mean, the thing for always for me is a lot of people don't know this. I went to Life Center Academy my seventh, eighth grade year. It's closed down now, but I went there. But my seventh grade year, Deion Waiters. Went to Life Center Academy for his 12th grade year. Wow. So that always been like to me, my I always been watching his steps and saying, like, you know, that's that's where I'm trying to get to. And I seen it at a young age where he was at his level. So that was kind of the one player where I would say, you know, like that's somebody where I definitely always try to catch. Like I'm like, I'm trying to catch you. I'm trying to catch you. Cause I seen you when I was younger. You was older, we was close, but still years apart. And now, you know, that's kind of where, I, where I'm shooting to. So that was kind of the player. And we played one-on-one, and he absolutely killed me when I was younger. That was, <laughs> that was one of those where I was like, all right. You got to get your rematch now, right? Yeah, I right? Now. <laughs> now you got your man strength on. <laughs> right. So, Lamar, I have a question that, honestly, I've been, you know, very curious about. I've seen a lot of these college athletes, you know, they go – to a school like St. Joe's, you know, they grind, they get the national recognition, they get the mixtape, they get everything, and then they get recruited to a higher level, you know, upper echelon D1 school, like right. Duke if you're, if you're elite, you know, Louisville, St. Mm -hmm. John, all these teams. But it comes with something. It comes with clout. It comes with, you know, perseverance. At St. Joe's, you're playing for your city. You know, maybe it's – I know you know, I know how St. Joe's plays. It's in a gymnasium, you know, there's right. – there's, there's people there, but not obviously as many as, you know, Louisville, Cardinal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the cloud, with, the, with all the perseverance, you know, playing in front of probably 10 times or 100 times as many fans as you're used to, how are you able to, you know, s stay with your play, not let it dissolve you into this cloud bubble? And how are you yeah. able to keep, keep your head, you know, sane and, and, and that, that, you know, that hungry mentality that you had at St. Joe's, like, you know, coming out there that you had a point to prove? Right. Um, 
I mean, I think I, I grew to, I learned that when I was a freshman, when I was younger. I mean, putting all eggs into one basket to win, like that was the, the main goal. Like when you had a, a lower school mid major, you kind of, you win your tournament, in your conference tournament, and that's how you make it to the tournament, majority <laughs> conference. So, you know, coming off with that, like I had to put all my eggs in one basket and say like, I got to do whatever is possible for our team to have the best chance to win. And I feel like that's the mentality that most people have to take when they're coming from a mid major to a high major. I feel like you know you know already that your role is not going to be the same as it was at the mid major. You should have stayed there if you didn't if you thought it was um, it was going to change somewhere else. It's not. You just go ahead and stay there. But if you know you're going to go somewhere higher, you know you got to play that role and whatever it might be. It might be for you to say I'm not that great of a knockdown corner shooter, but for this team I got to be an excellent corner shooter. Or I'm not that great of a defender, but for this team I have to be the best defender on our team. Those type of stuff is. I feel like where you develop more when you go from a mid major to a high major, it's like, okay, this role right here, I have to really execute, play it out to as full as possible and give it 100%. And I, I think that's that's the type of mindset I would say somebody who was a grad transfer had to say. Exactly. So we all graduated from the University of Hartford. You probably don't know the school. Yeah. You know, it's in Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah, no, I know that. My um, my friend, Tra Trayvon Wilkerson, just went there. But I know that. Oh, I know that is, yeah. Of course. Yeah, so I grew up with Trey. He went to Roman Catholic and everything, so. Yeah. Yeah, so we know what it takes, obviously, to grind and then be recognized. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's just a whole nother level because a lot of these people say, you know, they come into it and they don't get enough playing time as they want. And, you know, they don't develop as much chemistry because they're not willing to take the back seat and learn from a more prestigious, more, you know, cohesive program. So I think it's really right. interesting how you were able to take four years at St. Joe's, grinded all this time to finally be able to get that opportunity at, at Louisville. Mm -hmm. And obviously you didn't disappoint. You know, Louisville had a great year this year. Right. Obviously, you know the coronavirus, you know, uh, postseason ban, all that, all that stuff. It's just yeah. out out the window. But I, I just think it's really interesting how you persevered and were able to, you know, play in front of a, a stadium like Cardinal Nation. Yeah, um, I mean, for anybody who's a grad transfer, I want to know like it ain't easy. Like you gotta, you gotta come in there with kind of a fresh mindset, even though you're open. No pun intended, but you gotta come in there with that type of mindset even that you're older, you know, most of the time when somebody's older, four years already in college, they feel like they know everything. But you're gonna get to that level and you're gonna be like, wow, like it's a lot of stuff I didn't know. And I feel like you gotta have that open mentality to have that good extra year you having as a grad transfer. A lot of people probably go into the year like, you know, I'm going there, I'm trying, I'm gonna score 20, I'm going, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I mean, like at a higher conference, and a lot of times that's not even what you need to even get shown. Like they seen that you could score, what, what other stuff that you could do, that you there because you could score. So just little stuff like that, being able to switch people's mentality and stuff like that, is probably the, that's the biggest part. Definitely. Because, I mean, that, like you said earlier, that's kind of like what separates the, win the winners. Right. If you can go over there and play a role to your best of ability and sacrifice that ego of yours and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of take it to the back seat for the better of the team, Right. that's, how, that's when you get shipped. Yeah, Simple you just side. keep working. You're going to get to time. You're going to get everybody get their shot. You just got to keep working. But at that moment, it might not be for you. You know what I mean? So it go like that. Just got to so be ready. Hard. So Lamar, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm the one on this podcast that's not as savvy about basketball as, no uh, as Jake and Weathers might be. So, so you keep talking about like positions and fitting in on teams. I mean, what do you, what do you label yourself as fitting in on a basketball team? I mean, what's your next step? What's the position you're trying to fit in as? Yeah, I mean, I'm first. I'm a, I'm not the most athletic, not the most fast. So I'll just, I'm about game based off of IQ. I'm a high IQ point guard. I like to study the game, like to know all angles of the game. That type of stuff first. I can score when it's needed, get to my spots when it's needed, but I love to distribute the ball, set my teammates up. I love the art of assists. So, I mean, I'd rather go out there and get 12 and 10 than to go out there and get 25 and 0, like something like that. I, I want my teammates to be involved. That's the type of person I am. And that's why players like Chris Paul really speak to me because he averaged 11 assists for the longest. So, um, in terms of just fitting in, though, you just never know, you never know what your fit in is. Like, you don't, you don't know as a player. Every team is like, it's different. It's open, and it's like uh, I'm. It's like uh, the kid on the, the Saints. He didn't know that he um, he was a quarterback, but he didn't know that he was gonna be playing all different positions. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, he didn't know that, but that's him fitting in to do whatever it takes for the team to be the best. And those, those are the type of stuff that also on different ways is like that as a basketball player. As somebody who probably is a big man who wants to dribble the ball, be on a perimeter, but it's like we need you to be on that post, <laughs> blocking shots and dunking the ball. You got to take that role if you want to win. Get in the paint, big fella. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lamar, we'll leave it off with this. Uh, just for our viewers out there, what is some advice that you would give someone, you know, going to, going to high school, 
you know, wins the city championship, but is not recruited by the big time schools. So they have mm-hmm. to go. I personally know people like this, so this would be good for them. That yeah. They have to go, you know, D3 or the D2 route and, and personally grind. Personally, you went to D1, grinded at St. Joe's. But what would you say to a kid in high school who is not getting the Olivers that they want to, but, you know, what would you say for them to keep going in order to attain those goals in the future? Yeah, I'll just say you just got to keep a chip on your shoulder. Um, me being little, I mean, but it don't matter what uh, height you are. I'm just saying personally with my situation, me being a little guy, a little guard, you know, I got to have a chip on my shoulder. I got to be gritty. I got to be nasty out there. I got to get dirty. I got to do everything that matters to, to show that I want this more than the next person do. And I feel like if you coming from somewhere and you, come, you got a state championship, you're not going that high of a place, that chip is going to carry you. You got to come into college saying, like, even though I won my state championship, that don't mean nothing. I'm on a whole different you know, platform, a whole different level. They, they basically, if I don't got the high offers, they basically saying I'm not that good for that level. So I got to show these people. And that comes being coming with a chip on your shoulder. And that's, that's how my freshman year was. I mean, I was so frustrated at the beginning of my freshman year, you know, until conference play came. And I just kind of took off. But that chip on my shoulder made me get to that point. It was like, all right, like, you can do this. Just go out there and play and let it happen. 100%. Well said. Hey. All right. For our viewers out there, Lamar, where can we find you on social media? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, both at Fresh Kimball. Uh, Snapchat, Fresh underscore Kimball. Everything is on private, is open. So everybody can come check in with my life. You know, I'm a funny, high character guy. Good energy, all good positive vibes. Hey, why they call you Fresh, Kimball? That's just a young uh, nickname since I was young. Uh, people on the, kind of the OGs on the block gave it to me basically after my dad, you know, and I've been fresh kind of stuck with basketball for my 11-year-old, my best friend when I was 11 years old. He was calling me fresh out of everybody, and he stuck with basketball. So, I mean, it's funny how it is now, but now that's what I go by. So, I kind of – I love it now. I, hate I, don't, you. I don't even know Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know if it was because he was the cleanest kid growing up or what it was. I had to ask. Uh, I mean, that's, that's there too. You know, my mom always made sure that, you know, I was nice and fast and was young. She I like hate walking you. around on raggedy pants, hanging down, no belt stuff. Like, yeah, you got switch, you got change all that. I hate you, mom. Do <laughs> extra playing. fresh Mine during quarantine, me. bro. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I said you're extra fresh during quarantine, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, man. You got everybody <laughs> to the head, the hats on. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what's going on. Everybody working, but you know we gotta keep it solid. We gotta keep it solid for the men during quarantine, man. <laughs> yeah, you know that. <laughs> All right, so Lamar, I appreciate you coming on. You know, thank you. We're rooting for the best. You know, keep working. Oh, nothing but the best, my man. Thank you. And thank you, again. man. Thank hey, you. I'm glad, I'm glad we were able to finally get in touch with you, brother. Mm-hmm. Hey, good luck with everything, my guy. Thank Peace, you, man. man. Best of luck. Y'all continue doing y'all thing, man. I'll continue following. Thank you, my man. <laughs> another episode yeah. of E-Smack Talk Podcast. I am JR Sports Media, and it's just like <laughs>